Hello guys, today I want to talk to you about deleting has many relationships two or three levels deep. And it seems like an old topic, but I still see people confusing some stuff, getting errors on foreign keys. So I decided to summarize different ways of deleting parents with children. So for example, you have tasks and then you have projects with those tasks and then you have users. So project belongs to a user. So three level deep. For now, let's take a look at the two levels. So project and task, how to delete the project correctly with tasks automatically deleted. And then we'll get to the third level with users. So it would be with grandchildren, so to speak. So imagine you have a project that you want to delete. So I open Tinkerwell and if I launch that, we have a project and we want to just do project delete. And how do we specify the migration for the tasks? It's for an ID to project constraint. If you do perform delete on this query, you will get an error that there are tasks belonging to project, so you cannot delete that project. And there are a few ways how you can cascade, so-called cascade those deletes. First is on database level. So when introducing the foreign key, you can add here additionally cascade on delete. Then whenever you delete the parent record, the children records would be automatically deleted on the database level. So it will be on SQL level and Laravel wouldn't even know about that. So Laravel launches the query to delete the project and then MySQL or whatever SQL driver you have will automatically delete the children. So in the background, I've remigrated the database and now if we get that project, we have another project and now if we launch the delete, it is successful, true. And in the database, we don't see the project with ID one anymore and we don't see the tasks that have project ID one. So it was successfully cascaded deleting. As a proof of that, for example, project ID two, and let's refresh that, true, and we refresh the list of tasks and there's no task with project ID two. So that's one way, introducing the constraint cascade on the database level in migrations. Another way, and I've commented out the cascade and remigrated the database again, is to do that manually. So instead of doing project delete just like that, imagine we have a destroy method and you would need to manually delete the tasks and then delete the project. And there are two ways, even that, two sub ways. So you delete the tasks and then delete the project and don't forget to do that in database transaction because if for example tasks are successfully deleted but then something fails here deleting the project then the tasks would be still deleted but the project would still stay so halfway performing the operation it's not the correct database integrity then so database transaction is a must here and if we do that let's see what we have in the database so project id1 do we have any tasks with it now let's actually assign some task with project ID one because it was randomly seeded. So when we launch this, there should be no project with ID one and tasks with project ID one run null null means no error basically. And we refresh and we don't have that task and refresh the projects. We don't have that project. So it is successful. And why would you want to do that in Laravel? First, because maybe the database is already migrated and you don't have the control of remigrating and introducing the constraints. But also maybe you want to do that with Laravel because there should be some events fired on deleting the task. But in this case, actually, the events would not be fired. And that's why this operation may be beneficial. You may want to delete each task individually because in this case, there will be one SQL query, delete all the tasks by project ID. In this case, if you perform each, then there would be multiple queries, each executing delete by task ID, another task ID, another task ID. That is beneficial when you have observers or events on deleting the task. For example, if an app service provider have something like this, so task observer on deleted of the task, you do something like, for example, delete related files or perform some notification or job or something like that. So task observer, it should have written something to Laravel log with info helper. But as you can see, nothing new is here. But if we launch that with each, so let's comment that one out and run again, the result is null. But in Laravel log, we see new records, so which tasks were deleted. So in this case, if we're performing each of the children, then the observers would be fired. 
And by the way, the syntax each is a collection so-called higher order function. It's just a shorter syntax of doing for each in PHP. So yeah, to summarize this part, three options. Cascade in migrations, deleting all tasks manually, or deleting each task manually. With second and third options in transaction, in database transaction. Now, what if you have the third level, user? And this is actually very similar. You just need to perform that on two levels deep. So one option is for a migration have user delete. If you have in tasks project ID cascade on delete and in the projects table for an ID to user ID also cascade on delete. So then we can, if we, for example, comment out these transactions for now, I have again, I have again remigrated and reseeded the database. So five users with projects to each of them and project two and eight are assigned to user ID number one, which should be the first user. And if we run that, the result is true. And if we refresh, there are no projects and also probably no tasks. I haven't shown you the tasks, but you can see the ID three is missing, ID 10 and 12 are missing and user is also gone. So that works on the database level. Another option, if you don't have those constraints, so let's comment those out, projects and tasks like this, remigrate the database again and recede, and then let's implement the second option. So in, for example, user controller destroy, you would have something like this. So first you delete the tasks, then you delete the projects, and then you delete the user. Again, all in transaction. So we run that, null as a result, so no errors and refreshing the database. We also don't have user ID one and some projects should be missing. So ID three, five and eight are missing and some tasks refresh. Also IDs are missing, which means that they were successfully deleted. And again, in this case, if you're performing each, then observers would be fired. Let's test it in Laravel log. We should have new records here indeed. So yeah, this is the summary of options, what you can do when deleting parent with children or grandparent with parent with children. Of course, alternative way is to not cascade delete, but instead restrict the deletion. And again, you can perform that on database level and catch the error in Laravel, but that's the topic for another video. That's why you should subscribe to the channel to get all those videos, which I keep shooting daily. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.